guys are a bunch of grumpsters. Are you kidding me? Come on, we'll have a great time here. Hey, how often do we get to spend the day together, huh? Come on, we'll, we'll light a cozy fire, huh? We'll tell juicy stories and we'll roast some marshmallows. Oh, it sounds good to me. <laughs> Juicy stories? Marshmallows? <laughs> <laughs> Do I know this family or what? Psst. Oh, I got one. <laughs> Don't you have to be related to be a family? Well, not necessarily, sweetheart. See, families are people who share each other's lives and care about each other the way that we do. Yeah, Jonathan, you're such a jerk. Oh, isn't that beautiful? She couldn't be any more rotten to him if he was a real brother. <laughs> Hi. Welcome back to... Hey, yo. Away. The Who's the Boss podcast. Oh. I'm Tori. And I'm Kevin. And we are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. Yep. Um, okay, so before we get started, I have to tell the story that the other yeah. night. I can't believe you're going admit to admit this. <laughs> so I was just like, you know, you know how you spend 15 minutes on Netflix looking for something to watch? Yeah, that's the best part of Netflix. Yeah, because I didn't want to start a new series. We still need to watch Bridgerton, which we haven't. But I didn't want to start a new series. And we because, have watched some good stuff lately. Yeah, we have been. Um Queen's Gambit was fantastic. Yes, that was very good. And uh, Hotel Cecil. Yeah, which yeah, we was, the, which was, which was, yeah, it was good more for the um, history of that hotel in downtown Los Angeles. Right. Less about the unfortunate story of the girl who most likely just fell into that tank and drowned. Yeah. Um, because it gets a little off the rails with the conspiracy theories, but but it was good. I know, but I didn't. We didn't want to start a new series because we knew we had to do a podcast. And mm-hmm. then whenever we get sucked into a series, it's harder to do the podcast. Right. So we I'm like, okay, let's episodes. just yeah. find something to watch. And mm-hmm. I, I'm serious, guys. I just kept going down and down and down and down and down in the movies. And then suddenly, whose face did I see? Judith Light. I saw Judith Light's face, and I was like, "What is this?" And it, so it was a TV movie from 1990. So we we're like, okay, well, let's just put it on. For a couple minutes, and we'll see. And and then we no. watch the entire thing. Oh, God. So I'm not going to say this was a good movie. This was not a good movie. Um, you know, Judith was great. I love Judith, and you can even you can tell she's too good for this movie. Um, and Johnny Galecki was in it. Yeah, who that's was right. also fantastic. And um, it was. Did we determine if it was before or after after vacation? Oh, was it? Christmas vacation. I think. Yeah, I think so. Because it was nine. It was ninety, and I think that was like oh, Christmas vacation was before Seinfeld. Seinfeld started in eighty nine, so it had to be before. Okay, 89. yeah, and he just looked older in this. Yeah, terrible um, movie. But yeah, so the the summary, if you haven't seen this movie, is a lawyer's husband is having an affair. When the woman he is having an affair with is found dead, he is the prime suspect. So he adamantly proclaims his innocence. His wife takes... Oh, hang on. I had to click a link. <laughs> God. <laughs> it was longer than I was expecting. Oh, God. <laughs> his wife takes charge of his defense, but can she place his betrayal behind or aside to be able to provide him with the best possible defense? Mm, dun, dun, dun. Um, well, not, we're not going to answer that question for no, you. No, you must watch it yourself. Now, but- on Amazon Prime, you have to pay nineteen ninety nine for that movie. Do not do that. But if you have Netflix... You know, just give it a try. The and then just give it a try. <laughs> the thing that if you can gonna... find someone to pay you nineteen ninety nine to watch it, do that. <laughs> but the the um, most distracting part of the entire movie is the saxophone music. It is like a character on its own. It really it plays is. throughout the entire. It plays it in inappropriate moments. It's. We were joking that we thought that it, like the guy was just going to come out walking on to one of the sets, like playing the saxophone, because it's such a character. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So we wasted an hour and thirty minutes of our lives, and I think that I you it was maybe longer than that. Should, well, it probably was just because we had to keep stopping and starting because children were coming out in the living room. Oh right. But um, 
Yes. But, I mean, you can still see Judith's a fantastic actress. It's oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's seriously like... Yeah, it's just cheese. It's 90s cheese. It's like a Hallmark type of movie before there were Hallmark movies. Right. It's your classic 90s, late 80s, early TV 90s movie. TV movie. Yeah, true. But um, you know which one I would like to watch and not make fun of, because I loved it when I was a kid, is the Ryan White story, where she played the mother of Ryan mm. White. Do you remember that, watching that as no. a kid? Yeah, it was very actually very I mean, good. Uh, no, I don't. Um, so yeah, we'll have to find that one someday. Okay, maybe that's on Netflix for free. <laughs> oh, okay, so the episode that we're going to cover today, oh, my mouse is doing that super annoying thing again where it just decides to stop because I guess I need to charge it. Um, this episode is season three, episode 12. The title is The Way We Was. It first aired January 6, 1987. So we are now in 1987. Oh, wow. Yeah, first episode of the new year. Um, the TV Guide summary says, Snowed in, the Bowers and Miss Ellies gather around the fireplace and recount how Tony came to be the housekeeper. It was written by Ellen Gylas, a name we've heard before, and Howard Myers. What are you looking at? Nothing. Oh. Um, so, also, I was like, the way we was? Really? I know, me too. Why? Um, and I, I can't find why. So I looked online. I mean, there is a famous movie with Barbara Streisand and Robert Redford called The Way We Were. And as far as I know, grammatically, it should be The Way We Were. So I think maybe it's just a play on that. And then it's silly because it's like Tony. So Wait, it's like, what was the movie? Um, the Way We Were. Yeah. And who was in it? Barbara Bar- Streisand. Robert Redford. Maybe Robert Redford was a, a housekeeper. and. <laughs> Barbara Streisand hired him as uh, to no, clean her house. That, no? is, okay. that is not at all. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know what the movie is about. Okay, well then you, but, you can't. Maybe it is. No. Okay. No, no. Uh, told partly in flashback, the story of okay, Kate to and Hubble. Their differences are immense. Hubble. I'm not going to read any more of this, but... Um, I'm sure I've actually seen this movie because my mom and my Aunt Mary are huge Barbara Streisand fans. Mm. Um, But (laughs) but no. So then there is also an episode of The Simpsons with the same title, The Way We Was, not The Way We Were. Which is so interesting. Well, because so like maybe it was just kind of a play because of like Tony's Brooklyn... I feel speak. like, I mean, we can't then, find the internet, but I just feel like that's, you know, like, yeah, Brooklyn, yeah, the way we was. Right. You know <laughs> and then I mean? Homer like, is also the New York kind of not smart. Right. So it's also maybe the way, because that episode recounts how Homer and Marge met and fell in love. Ah, um, the way we was. But when I was searching the title, The Way We Were, there are several episodes of other shows. There's an episode of Facts of Life. Family Ties, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, look at you! The OC and That's So Raven that all are titled "The Way We Were." Oh. So, "Way We Was" Mm-mm. is just a play on words. Okay. And I'm gonna put away the grammar nerd now. Okay. Okay. We always get started here. Come on. <laughs> all right, and I'm gonna have to use this mouse. Okay. So, when this episode starts, the kids are waiting to see if they are going to have to go to school. This is actually very timely for what's happening right now in a good portion of the country. because it's snowing everywhere. Yeah, snow is being dumped on a good portion of the country where snow normally doesn't happen that much. Yeah, true, Uh, Yeah, like Texas, Mm -hmm. um, Even like North Florida, I think, a little bit, no? Really? I think. Yeah, I don't know about um, East Coast, but maybe West Mm. Coast of Florida. That's Yeah, that's what I mean. So... As a kid, I remember watching this scene and being so jealous because we didn't have snow days. And like you were saying, maybe we would have had hurricane days. But I started thinking about it, and I honestly do not remember a hurricane until I was in high school. No, uh, we had... I, uh, but I was on the East Coast and you were on the West Coast. I know, but... Uh, yeah, but you were near the... near. I know, we were right on... to the water. I know, but like... So why did I... I Seriously, we had hurricanes. There'd be like hurricanes coming. They would just decide to, for the kids to stay home. Yeah, maybe they just never came that far north when I was a kid. I guess maybe. That's true, because I was in like Tampa. I was way further north than you. Yeah, but... And so I was such like a... I mean, this is not going to surprise you at all, but I was kind of a high-strung kid. And 
of when I would watch the news at night while I was awake, well, the news was on, I don't know. Anytime the <laughs> word hurricane would come on, I would get really scared. But mm. then I would realize they were talking about the Miami hurricanes, and I'd be like, oh, okay, it's just a story for the football oh, God. team. <laughs> Oh, my God. So, yeah, so I don't really remember. And then even in high school, so the first hurricane that I remember, it was Hurricane Andrew. I'd say Andrew. So but, that was like 91 or something like that. Yes, but because we were farther north, we were not as affected by it at all. Yeah. We actually had more rain like four days after Andrew than we did during the actual storm. Oh. And we did not get off of school. I remember like a huge middle like... um open area that just had like grass and a stage. Mm -hmm. There was so much rain that it was like a moat around the stage. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we, they still didn't cancel school. Wow. So, you're going. <laughs> but now our kids, because we live in California, our kids' snow days are fire days. Yes. When the fires, when the hills are burning enough and it's, it's yeah, and the, the air quality, quality is so bad, poor, they will they don't keep go to school. Well, I mean, not now. Every day is a snow day here. Oh, right. <laughs> That's right. They're home every day. Um, but, um, but the one thing that I noticed about this episode, I was looking past the fact that they're waiting to see if they get a snow day and this breakfast layout. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Tony, it's it's a school day. He's got eggs. Oh, every morning There's he has a pile eggs. of toast. Yeah. There's bacon. This is what he does every single morning. I mean, we are lucky if you know, bowl of cinnamon toast crunch <laughs> gets thrown out <laughs> to the table. I mean, well, yeah, and on a weekday. Before, I mean, on the weekends, I can go. You know, right? I, I get a little crazy, and sometimes we'll make eggs. But man, but especially before we they have coffee cups. <laughs> I know. What are they? Oh, oh wait, they're having hot cocoa, actually, um, or hot chocolate. Oh, that's right. But yes. Very good. Yeah, so, right. Tony, remember when he first moved in, he started with the eggs. So he yeah, makes that's it, true. No, he I, thinks, I should have known better. But here's the other thing. In their house, both even Jonathan wouldn't eat the eggs, and now he does because Tony Maselli lives there. In our house, our older child will never eat an egg. No. She probably will go her entire life without ever eating an that's egg. That's sad so. to me. <laughs> that's what's so aggravating about making breakfast. So, yes, um, I know. Even before like before we were home all the time, they still just had a bowl of cereal to get out the door that's every true. morning. Which is also what I had as a kid. I don't remember ever having breakfast like this on a weekday. Um, but then, and then Angela insults him by coming in every morning and just having juice and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> he makes this whole breakfast. Right. And, no. Um, so they, they have like an old boom box out. Yeah. Which it wasn't old to them. And no. so they're listening for the radio announcements to see what counties are closed. It's going through a bunch of counties and Fairfield is not one of them. Yeah. Not so Tony's like, sorry, kids, you got to go out there and learn. And they're like, oh, and then the guy comes back on. He's like, wait a minute, kiddos, one more. And then he actually says two counties and Fairfield is one of them. Yeah. So they now do not have to go to school today. So um, Tony asks Jonathan, would you like some more hot chocolate? Jonathan's like, no, maybe we should save it just in case we get stuck here and we run out of food <laughs> and we have to eat each other. <laughs> That sounds like something our child would say. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he would say. <laughs> oh, Jonathan. Um, He's thinking. But also, like, I mean, yeah, let's let's save any of the meats and cheeses, but go ahead and have the hot chocolate. Right. I mean, you're still going to want to eat with a family member, even if you still have the hot chocolate around. Um, watch, yeah, when you're eating a family member, you need something to wash it down. <laughs> hot chocolate. And Tony says, well, you can't eat me because I'm the cook. So in that disturbing scenario, Tony's <laughs> cooking up the dead bodies. Mm, it's getting whatever. worse. Yeah. So Mona comes in the back door and she brings in a bunch of snow with her. And I know the fake, it's so fake and cheesy looking. Like I know. Someone's just there off camera blowing a fan with <laughs> styrofoam or something everywhere. It's funny. Um, it is very sitcom snow, and they yeah. didn't make her wet like they made Jeffrey that time. Where I was right. really impressed. Um, and then Tony says, welcome Nanook. Mm. So we had to look that up because yes. I did not understand that I reference at all. I didn't understand it either. Um, and so Nanook in um, the indigenous Canadian um, 
what is it here? Indigenous Canadian. <laughs> you lost me at indigenous. I know, I know. And well, Canadian. Well. No, I mean like, meaning like. It, he was, it was basically the master of bears. So Nanook <laughs> was a bear. Oh. That he was the, he decided whether or not the hunters deserve success in finding and hunting the bears. Then it was popula- popularized hmm. by a documentary called Nanook of the North. It was a feature-length documentary in 1922, and it was silent. Hmm. Yes. How do you make a silent? You think that's guess- on Netflix? Oh, <laughs> come on. Now I'm going to be watching so, that nook. It basically, and he, they believed that it was a polar bear, and Native people believed polar bears allowed themselves to be killed in order to obtain the souls of the tools, which they would take with them into the hereafter. So he basically called Mona a bear. <laughs> yeah, he called her a master of bears. Master, yeah. Oh, master of bears. Yeah, yeah I guess because they would be have on that much clothing. Well, yeah, and they lived in Jackets. the snow because they were polar bears. Okay. Right. So, yeah. But if, when I first heard I was like, is it like a Mork and Mindy reference? <laughs> oh, like Nanu? <laughs> nanu, Nanu? Because I was like, I don't remember that at all okay so <laughs> nah, no. then he asks mona if she would like some hot chocolate and she just wants her to, him to pour it on her mm-hmm. <laughs> now angela comes in and she's like oh mother i'm so glad you're here we should get a head start for the train the only one who has no idea what's going on in the <laughs> <I know>. outside world <laughs> completely dressed and ready like the kids were half ready so it looked like they had you know right the, just in case they're going to school right but if not they could go yeah yeah if they had to go they could just go run up and put their clothes on if not they were ready for the day angela is completely dressed oh head yeah to toe. yeah shoulder um, pads and all Yes, and Tony's pouring her her coffee and her juice. <laughs> when Mona's like, haven't you heard? The trains are not running. We cannot go to work. And Angela's like, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> this is the woman who left work to go play mini golf. But <laughs> right. Now all of a sudden she's panicked that she can't get into work. <laughs> but it is very Angela. Yeah. So um, Samantha's like, no, it's going to be great. There's TV and there's stereo and there's always a girl's best friend. And she picks up the phone on the wall and then screams because her best friend is dead. Oh, no. Well, not her best friend, the phone. Right. (laughs) But that is. But like this scenario nowadays is like so much what it is when we lose Internet. Oh, I know. I mean, the kids yell at me like (laughs) I'm the one who turned it off. As soon. I guess because I always fix it. It, we could have all the food in the house and they would still end up eating us just because the internet never came back on. Right. Like, that be, is, that's it. <laughs> wow, the internet's down. Like what? Like I just caught the cable in the I yard know. and waited to see who noticed. I know. But huh. yeah, so that was, I guess, the t- that her, was like the know. equivalent of the internet. And so you had was the phone. That yeah. was the link to the outside world. So now Samantha's like, this day's going to suck. Mm. And. Tony's like, come on, all of you are a bunch of grumpsters. <laughs> Whatever that them. is. <laughs> Grum- grumpsters. <laughs> and he says, you know, when's the last time we all got to spend the day together? We can go sit in front of the fire. We can um, drink. Some, oh, sorry. Yeah, sit yeah. in front of the fire, roast some marshmallows. Tell juicy stories mm, yeah. and roast some marshmallows. So Mona's like, I'm in. She gets up and goes running out. Um, and then the kids are like, juicy stories mm. and then they go running out and then angela says marshmallows yeah, i know it's pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> like suddenly she forgot that she's not going to work right and, no because yeah. there's marshmallows that's great so when they all come running into the living room mona and tony are standing there and he's like do i know this family or what so jonathan asks angela don't you have to be related to be a family and she's like, no, not necessarily. You know, family is um, people who live together and who care about each other, you know, and... Share their lives together. Right. And <laughs> Samantha says, yeah, Jonathan, you're such a jerk. I know, that's so mean. <laughs> but Tony's like, look... like a family. She couldn't... Oh, yeah, right. Right. He's like, she couldn't be any meaner if she was... If he was her real little brother. Right. That's cute. So Angela says, you know, it was a real stroke of genius how I brought this family together. Mm. And then Mona's like, wait a minute. Oh, no. Tony says, I'm the one who charmed you into hiring me. Yeah, that's right. 
And then Mona's like, but wait a minute, I'm the one who delivered him to you. And then Jonathan says, but I'm the one, I'm the reason why we, mom needed help. And then Samantha says, but I'm the reason we left Brooklyn. Mm. All of which, all of these things are true. That is true. So they start to do a flashback now of how they came to live there. And Tony's like, yeah, I remember we were living in this little tiny apartment on Pitkin Avenue. Is this the first time we've seen this apartment? Uh, Yes. I think, yeah, that's what I thought. All right. I wanted to, I couldn't remember. Yeah. So they do, so it's like you were saying, it's almost kind of a clip show, except not really because there are. They reenacted the clips. They're reenacting (laughs) the flashbacks. Um, And, you know, as a kid, I don't remember being able to tell how much older Samantha and Jonathan were, but now as an adult, I can really tell. Right. I mean, as a kid, you wanted to believe they dressed her young and, you know, no makeup and uh, hair and. You you know, they made her look like she did when right, they first yes. moved. So you didn't buy it. You bought it All as right. a kid. Yeah. But I noticed that Alyssa Milano is not doing the accent really as much as, as she, she did, did in the beginning. That's, yeah. that's a good that's a Which good, makes sense for Samantha now because she's kind of losing the accent, but Samantha right. here should probably have it again. Um so Tony wakes up because there is an awful sound coming from the pipes, but he thinks it's his alarm clock. And Sam's <laughs> like, it's not the alarm clock. I'm just getting some water. So in this apartment, when you get water, the pipes start to shake and rattle. So I, mean, I would think, it. well, yeah, maybe it has to do something with low water pressure. Or I was also thinking maybe like frozen pipes, too, because it's like New oh, York. But, yeah, um, yeah. but uh, maybe it's not that cold. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably just letting you know it's a... Low rent building. Right, yes. And I was wondering if this is all their furniture and stuff, but I don't think it is because they pack up and leave everything because there's a picture of Jesus on the wall, which is kind of, I mean, Tony is very Catholic. True, yeah, yeah. But I feel like that artwork just is like Brooklyn grandma apartment (laughs) kind of artwork, or at least it was for my Brooklyn grandma. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So he notices that Samantha has a uh, black eye. And we know that from the pilot that Samantha, when she gets there, has a black eye. So now we find out how she got it. So, um, oh, no. Well, she says in the pilot, you should see the other guy. Or whatever. That's true. So, right. But he's noticing it for the first time. And he's like, wait a minute. You didn't have that last night when I came home from work. She's like, yes, I did, but I got into bed and the lights were off, so you didn't notice. Yeah, which is good, um, good continuity. Like... Not that it was hard for them to remember she had a black eye, but that they reference it. Yeah, no, they you know do. I mean? Yeah, they do a great job with the flashbacks yeah, here. It was very good. Even up to her outfit at the very end, which we'll, we can discuss more when we get there. But um, so he's like, let me put some ice on it. She's like, no, I want it to look cool for the other kids in school. <laughs> like This is such a different Samantha than we've come to know in Connecticut. Um now she's all about clothes and mm-hmm. and long nails, and then she was all about showing off her black eye. So Tony's like, oh, you're really going to go to school today? And she's like, of course I'm going to go to school. And then he pulls a note off of their little tiny refrigerator or <laughs> oven or something that says, it's from one of her teachers, and she's giving their condolences over the unfortunate murder-suicide of her favorite Un- aunt. I think it was untimely. <laughs> untimely. <laughs> The murder suicide was untimely. There's oh, never a good time no, for a murder suicide. <laughs> that made me laugh. And so, and she says, "We hope we'll see you when you get back from the funeral in Topeka." So mm. they, <laughs> in Samantha's yeah, little, you know, she's gonna be gone for a while, right? In Samantha's little fantasy world, they have relatives in Topeka. Um, so he's like, you know, you're starting to sound like these kids in an after-school special, and she's like, you know, you're taking all this parenting stuff. Uh, too seriously. I'm just like every other kid around here. (laughs) And he's like, well, maybe that's the problem. So he starts to tell her about um, a place that he saw when he was in Connecticut. And they, it's like quiet streets and picket fences. And he was delivering fish, right? He was delivering his fish deliver a case of salmon. Yeah. To somewhere. That and then he like... says, holy mackerel about the place. <laughs> <laughs> fish jokes. I like the fish jokes. Um, but she's like, you know, I'm really happy here. 
And he's like, yeah, well, I guess driving a fish truck isn't that bad. So did we already know that that's what Tony was doing? No, I don't him? remember that, but I figured, I mean, if it, if, if we knew it, you would remember it. Yeah, I don't remember. But yeah. um, so he says, you know, I just wish I could find a job where I could spend more time with you and less cats follow me home at the <laughs> end of the day. No, oh, fit another fish joke. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, what's, I mean, another thing that I thought was kind of great here is the fact that they're they're pretty much showing like, you know, Tony kind of, I mean, not that he had some kind of, uh, I mean, he was a baseball player, but like now he's just trying to make ends meet, you know, like he's yeah. driving a fish truck and then he's going to go try to be a hotel manager, at, you know, in Connecticut or whatever. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, it was just like, he was just kind of an everyday, just struggling. You know? Yeah. He was just doing what he had to, to take care of Sam. Right. And it's cute because... Um, she mentions before the flashback, you know, the apartment wasn't that bad. I had my own bedroom. Right. And, and so he's given her the bedroom and right, he's sleeping he can... on a pullout couch at night. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's basically doing whatever he can to make her comfortable. Um, so now they go back to the living room. Flashback is over. You know the flashback is over because this weird sort of yeah, like, like weird feedback <laughs> 80s effect goes effect. on. Right? Yeah. Um, and there's some twinkly music in the background. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. And then Mona's like, sounds rough, but it was a bed of roses compared to life. And I'm I'm just, I'm I'm not gonna go into all the Hitler references that she right. goes into because I really don't think that, that would fly on TV today, but um yeah. So but again it's like it's not a competition. Let's just Mona. say the old maid was Hitler's like Hitler's Hitler sister. Hitler's sister, yeah. We can go that far, right? Yeah, but Jonathan also makes a reference to her little tiny mustache. I know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's terrible. Um, so, but yeah, I just love how Mona's like, yeah, it's still better than we had it here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so they start telling about the housekeeper before Tony, and she was very strict, <laughs> and they go to a flashback where she is punching the pillows I know, on the like couch. It's like just boxing them. <laughs> Like, very strange. This actress here, her name is Lou Leonard. Mm -hmm. And she's, again, like a character actress that you've seen in so many things. So she looks recognizable to you. But, like, I couldn't pinpoint the one thing that I would have known her from. I know, me either. But, yeah, I mean, she's just been in so much stuff over the year. <laughs> and once again, Mickey and Maude, that movie I want to watch. Watch. Oh gosh! Right. Um, Starman, Night Court, Breaking Two, Maybe I Electric Boogaloo, in Night Court, or Break. I mean, I watch always watch those Breaking movies, know, so maybe too. that's where I recognize um, her from. She's in Annie, so I probably recognize her from Annie. Mm. Although right now I can't remember who she was. Right. Laverne and Shirley, Mork and Mindy. Her first credit was 1954. So yeah. Um, and she yeah. passed away in 2004 at the age of 77. Hmm. Now, in the flashback, as she's beating the crap out of the yeah, couch the pillows, out of the pillows. Yeah, Mona comes in and she's like, oh, hello, Frau Hilla, Hiller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so Mona like throws her books on the chair and Mrs. Hiller's like, you're, you're a slob. So you can tell that these two women do not like each other at all. She, I know. And if Mona doesn't like you, forget it. Right. Then you're, she's not you're going to hide anything. No. Um, and she's going to do whatever she can to get rid of you. Yep. So she, Mona asks where Jonathan is and Mrs. Hiller says he's in the kitchen, but don't go near him. Cause I just cleaned him. <laughs> like, like he's a car or something <laughs> or the bathtub. I just cleaned him. So when Mona goes in the kitchen, Jonathan's sitting there eating a little sandwich, mm, and he's I got little like a little pitcher of juice that he goes to pour, and Mona's joking around with him, and she makes him spill it all over his little outfit. Mm. And his outfit, he's like wearing a bow tie. A like little pink shirt and a bow yeah, tie. Yeah, she must be picking out his clothes, too. Yeah. Um, or do you think Jonathan dressed like this, and then Tony's the one who changed it? I don't know. I feel like this is Mrs. Hiller's influence. Maybe. Oh, that's true, too. It could be, yeah, could be Angela, could too. Could have been Angela. So, Jonathan, I feel like he gets away with looking young easier than Sam does. But when we went back and actually looked at a couple of these scenes in the pilot, he is so much younger. I know. He's so cute. Okay, so Mrs. Hiller comes in, and she's like, what happened? 
and she says, did you spill juice on yourself? And he's like, um, no. And then Mona's like, I did it. I poured the juice on him. And so she's trying to save Jonathan. And Mrs. Heller's like, I don't believe that. Then Angela comes in. Uh, and she's she sees Jonathan. She's like, oh, honey, did you get grape juice on your shirt? <laughs> and he's like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and Mona's like, I poured it on him. So Mrs. Hiller is like, I find it odd that... Um, that a, gr- a grown that, woman. Or- yeah, a grown woman would just pour it on a child. And so Mona and Mrs. Hiller are fighting. She'll pour grape juice on another person, I think she says. Oh, okay. Right? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, because it's leading up to what's going right, to happen here. right. And so Mona then takes a pitcher of grape juice and pours it onto Mrs. Hiller. Yeah, and Jonathan loses it. I know. <laughs> He's just like, oh, no. Yeah. He's waiting for a full-on brawl in the yeah. middle of the kitchen. So Mrs. Hiller says, either that tramp goes or I go. <laughs> Wow. And then Angela says, Mrs. Hiller, that tramp is my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the end. I mean, but, but would you think she knew that? So. What? Th- Mrs. Hiller must have known that oh, Mona yeah, was yeah, the yeah. mother. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I know it's just her saying, <laughs> right, way, right, her right. way of saying, I'm offended by right, what you right. just said. Like, so I can't, it. my mother can't go anywhere. <laughs> so right. I'm very so sorry. So that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was the end of Mrs. Hiller. So. Tony, they go back from the flashback back to the living room, and Tony's like, I can't believe how lucky you guys are that you found me. And Angela, now this part is not in your antenna TV version. Right. Um, But Angela's like, we were both very lucky because you got a better life for your daughter, and I was looking for someone to run my house and help raise my son Mm -hmm. and bring some joy back into, and then Tony just looks at her and she's like, my kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) So I know. Why can't she just say my joy back into my house? Come on. I know. Or whatever she was going to say. I know, but then it, <clears throat> she would She would know. She wants that joy to extend to the bedroom, and she can't let him know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> the joy to extend to the bedroom. Um, oh, my So gosh. then Jonathan's like, well, how did we get Tony then? So they're about to tell the story when the phone rings. Oh, the phone's working again. best friend is, has come back to life. Yep. So the internet's she, back on. Yeah. So Tony answers it, and it's Bonnie, and he's like, oh, it's Bonnie. She's got some news for you. And Samantha, Samantha's like, well, tell her I'll call her back later. So she's so invested in this story now that she's going to give up talking to Bonnie. Wow. So Mona, now they're going to do one of the most 80s things I've ever seen. I know. This is pretty 80s. So... After he hangs up the phone, Mona and Tony go into the kitchen, and the kids are like, wait a minute, what about the story? Yeah, because he says, well, first he says, or no, she says Mona uh, to Tony, help me go get some snacks. Or right, something. yeah, yeah. That's why they're leaving. Yeah, they're leaving you go Very get snacks. Very important part there. I had to bring <laughs> I'm up. sorry. Yes, no, you're right. No, I missed kidding. that part. Um, and so the kids are like, what about the story? And so Tony turns back, and he says, don't go away. We'll be right back. And then they cut to like a plate of who's the yeah, boss, the not who's plate. The, boss. the who's the boss this? slide or whatever. Right, right, like a slate. And <laughs> you hear Angela's voice say, you heard what he said. Mm. Mm. We should grab a little clip of that. I know, that I, I agree. Pretty it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's pretty funny. So, Although we don't have commercials. That's we true. We would never need it. I know. The only time we've ever used anything like that is when we have the two the two parters sometimes mm-hmm. going into like the next. Oh, one. that'd be a good thing to yeah. save that for. So maybe I'll save it for that. Okay. So when they come back from commercial break, um, Tony and Mona are coming back in. They have popcorn. Yeah. He's got more hot chocolate. And Jonathan's made him a marshmallow. And he's like, Tony, I made a marshmallow for you. And it's completely burnt. And (laughs) Tony asks, did you get that recipe from your mother? Oh. Poor Angela. I know. Always a dig. Yes. But but also true. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love that Catherine Hellman just knocks a little piece of popcorn on her lap and then picks it up and eats it. Yeah. Doesn't even like, (laughs) doesn't slow her down at all. No, I've got to keep the scene going. Yeah. I've heard that Catherine Hellman made very few mistakes on this show. Not that that would have been a hard one to come back from, but like flubbing lines and stuff. She did not do that. That's actually pretty cool to know. Well, I mean, 
I would say she has probably less lines than the other actors, but mm, true, she's true. been working in TV. Oh, the other thing we watched on Netflix that I know, we need I to recommend I just thought about <laughs> that I just too. thought of is the Betty White um, documentary, oh, which is good. fantastic. And it's short. It is short. It's like 55 minutes yeah. long. But um, yeah, you know, m- much like her, Catherine Hellman had been working in television for years up to this point. So she's a professional. She knows what's going on. I much... I enjoyed the Betty White thing much more than I enjoyed in defense of my husband or whatever it was called. In defense of a married man. Whatever. (laughs) Whatever Um, Okay. So now Mona starts to tell the story in a flashback of how she found Tony. And she says, well, basically, I ran into him in the lobby of my apartment building. Yeah. So now we see Mona come in on a bicycle and run into Tony. Yeah. This is not the bicycle we've seen no. at the beginning of the pilot episode of the show. But if you remember the episode Jonathan the Gymnast, this bicycle is in the garage. Yep. So did they lose you, the other bicycle? Well, Have they rented that bicycle? I mean, she literally got a new bicycle a day after she meets Tony exactly. here. Because I know for a fact when... He comes to the house for the first time. She's on that other bigger bicycle, yes. which is a day or whatever after, later. Okay. Right? So yes. So sh- she's gonna be like, "I don't like this bicycle." She goes and puts it, it in Angela's little. garage. Right. And then she goes and buys another bicycle. I can't blame her. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go with that. It's a weird looking bicycle. Uh, it is. It's like one of those. It's like a portable bicycle. No, I feel the like the wheels those, are very small. I feel like those have made a comeback. Actually, that's true. Because I think they're nice and foldable. Yeah, you know, um, for all the places we go. Well, <laughs> yeah, really. So um, she runs into him, and he, she's like, "Oh, nice catch!" And he says, "I've always been good at catching curves." Mm, God, little baseball reference, but also sexy reference. Right. <laughs> So he asks Mona, which um, is the owner's apartment? And she tells him it's 405. And she's like, oh, are you applying for the manager's position? And he says, yes. She's like, you're going to love it here. You know, there's a lot of great stuff to do. You're going to love managing this building. And we're going to love being managed by you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. She's kind of looking him over. So she likes what she sees already. Well, she's got on those Sassoon jeans. Or whatever. I'm going to say, and I did bring this up when we watched this episode. Yeah. Normally I don't point stuff like out like that out, but he is working hard in these jeans. He's owning those jeans. <laughs> it almost looks not real <laughs> when he's going to the elevator and you see his butt in these jeans. Yeah. Um, Bounce a quarter off of that thing. <laughs> you really, you really can. So he's saying he's having a little bit of a hard time convincing his daughter to move to Connecticut. And Mona asks him, well, what about your wife? What does she think about it? And he says that he's widowed. She's like, oh, you know, I'm really sorry. It's got to be hard raising your daughter all alone. Mm -hmm. And he says, yeah, you know, it's hard, but I come from a long line of fathers. Such a dad joke. (laughs) I know. So he's getting ready to leave and go up to 405 when Mona's like, wait a minute, I've got the perfect job for you. My daughter is looking for a manager. (laughs) And he's like, oh, well, uh, what of a building? And she's like, ah, you could call it that. We call it a house. (laughs) And so he's like, (laughs) yeah, he's like, wait a minute, do you want me to be a maid? And she's like, well, I mean, you could call it that, but we call it housekeeper she also says here the size of the house she says that it's four bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms okay is that accurate i think that's a lie yeah i was gonna (laughs) i just thought of that as you were saying it but here's always been my wait a minute what is it it, three and a half bathrooms yeah um yeah that's false because there's definitely two bathrooms upstairs and maybe a half downstairs there yeah so there's the half under the stairs there's the kids' bathroom upstairs. There's obviously Angela's bathroom. But here's what I was thinking. Either Tony has a like a, a three-quarter bathroom in his room. Mm. Because if you remember, he says, I don't have a tub. I only have a shower. Well, the kids have a tub. 
So maybe oh. he has his own bathroom in his room, which okay. would be nice if he didn't have to share with the kids. Yeah. Or Angela has her own bathroom in that 1,700 square foot office downstairs. Oh, true. But we will never see this additional bathroom. Yeah, we'll never know. Right? So let's stop talking about it. <laughs> but I mean, that's the kind of stuff I love to like pick apart yeah, on I know, these sets. Right. There um, definitely is four bedrooms. That Yes, definitely four bedrooms. So... She says, you know, you could call it a maid, but we call it a housekeeper. And he's like, look, lady, I used to play professional major league baseball. Mm. Guys like me, we don't end up being maids or housekeepers. And then he says, Joe DiMaggio did make a little bit of coffee, but that was just that one time. Right, which I, I had to look up. Yeah, you looked that up. I did. I did. Um, Joe DiMaggio did um, Mr. Coffee commercials in 1978. That is fantastic. I know. And I mean, I was actually well after his career, obviously, in 78. I mean, he was older. Um, I mean, I read just a quick story about it, but basically the creator, his name was Vincent Morata, was, um, he actually played for the Cardinals, huh. um, baseball player. He somehow convinced, he needed, Mr. Coffee was just starting and he wanted to really get it out there. So he felt like Joe DiMaggio was an, a likable guy. Yeah. Overall, so he convinced him to do the commercials. That's also and be the spokesman. Crazy to think that Mr. Coffee was just starting out. Yeah, I know, Mr. Like, Coffee. Like I don't remember a, a world without Mr. That's what Coffee. This article in it. says 1978. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yep. so that is a pretty funny reference. I and mean, and that's pretty much is that the first real like coffee maker? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I mean, before that, did you make it on a, in a pot? Maybe or? like a French press or... Right, like, I don't know. I, I, anyway, yeah. I don't know anything Maybe about coffee makers. Another day of research, but... I just always remember having the exact coffee maker I'm looking at in the yeah, picture. Yeah, pretty much here. same. Yeah. Like, I remember Mr. Coffee growing up, for yeah, sure. Yeah, always. So... Anyway, sorry, I took us off the rails. No, here. that was interesting. Now, he says... oh. So Mona's like, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. Um, well, but who takes care of your little girl? And he's like, well, I do. And she says, oh, but you probably don't, I mean, you wouldn't do the cooking or anything. And he says, well, actually, I'm a really good cook. See? And then she's like, oh, okay. But guys like you, they don't, they don't do the cleaning and all the laundry. And he's like, of course I do the cleaning and the laundry. What do you think? I can afford a maid? Right. <laughs> So she tells him, I hate to break the news to you, but you're already a housekeeper. You're just not getting paid for it. Yeah, Mona, always selling it. I know. How does she think this? She just, first of all, she just met this guy. Right. Like, let me just try to get this guy into my daughter's <laughs> home that I have no idea who he is. We've watched enough Datelines and the Ted Bundy documentary to yeah, know that you yeah. don't just go finding some guy in a hotel lobby and trying to see if he'll be your Yeah, Ted Bundy especially. Dre nicely dressed. Yes. Good looking man. Probably also wore the heck out of a pair of Sassoon jeans. Yes. So, but, uh, yeah, you don't want sorry, that. I said that with a lot of conviction. <laughs> I, I, um, right. You just, you, you can't trust it. Right. Yeah, so now we do know in but the But Mona's pilot, looking past all that. She sees a good-looking dude <laughs> to come and woo her daughter. But we do know in the pilot that she tells um, Angela that he has great references. She talked to his parish priest and, like, a few other people. So as soon as she leaves here... She goes and dress. She, she goes and follows up on all his references. Right, and then ditches the bicycle and then gets the new Man, one. This is a, a really busy afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Mona. So she says, you know, you're already a housekeeper. You're just not getting paid for it. And he says, I'd like to keep my amateur standing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's still not really buying this situation. And she's like, well, you know, all I'm saying is you could raise my grandson along with your daughter. I know. Like, then it becomes, wait a minute. Now I'm raising someone's son. <laughs> What just happened here? <laughs> now I'm somebody's baby's baby daddy. What happened? And she, oh, and that's the other thing too. She says he needs a guy, right? He needs a guy like you. Which earlier they referenced that Jonathan needs a male role model right. in his fan in his life. I'm not sure what's wrong, what's going on, but yeah, uh, they're in therapy over it. Yes. Did that? Or, wait, did I miss that? 
Oh no no, it's coming up. Yeah. Right? Oh, I, I spoiler. No, it's fine. I totally thought that. Somehow oh, no, I, I thought that, that they mentioned. Yeah, you're right. They don't. Um, it is coming up. So yes, but she says here, you know, he needs a guy like you, and they do reference that in the pilot. As soon as okay. he meets Jonathan, he knows who he is, and he says, "You must be Jonathan." Ah, um, right. And she says he needs someone oh, caring, right. intelligent, and someone with 15-inch biceps. <laughs> and she pinches his arm. And he says 15 and a quarter. And she's like, yeah, go home and check it when you get home. <laughs> right, like she's an expert on biceps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so before he can leave, she's like, oh, hang on. Here's a picture of my little grandson, Jonathan. So this was back when people Carried still kept pictures, pictures in their wallet. In their wallet. And it's funny, if you almost look at the scene, it could be like a phone case. It does. Right. It could be like an iPhone <laughs> Looks like case a phone or, with yeah. a case attached to it. Like he's looking. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and I, there was a real, like there's a flash of a photo, but I can't, I can't make it out what mm. the photo is. So he looks at it. He's like, oh, what a cute kid. And then he's like, oh, and this must be your daughter. And she says, yes, that's my lovely daughter, Angela. The nicest thing Mona will ever say about Angela. <laughs> okay, but that's a good point. It's all um, downhill from here. And Tony's like, oh, well, she looks very easy to work for. All right. So now we have confirmation that Tony saw a picture of Angela before he even got there. True. And thought she was hot or yeah. cute or, or somewhere easy to in work the middle. For. Right. <laughs> um, so now Mona's like, you know what? You're not going to like working here, actually. She's like, it's nothing but old ladies, and you'll be walking a lot of poodles. <laughs> and as she says that, the elevator doors open, and a woman walks out wearing just a red leotard. Yeah, she looks like she's going to the set of Baywatch. <laughs> was that what that show was called, Baywatch, yes. where they wore the red? That is exactly what, and like, Nicole Eckert was on that show. That's a good point. Yeah, I like full circle. Uh, yeah. Um, Yes, it's exactly what that show was. So, but she's going to the exercise class that I guess is in the downstairs. And I guess back then, even though you look like you're not wearing anything, you just wore it straight yeah, to... Yeah, I, I guess so. This was the equivalent of wearing your yoga pants and a tank top, wow, I guess. Wow, times have changed. <laughs> yes, they really have. But um, who is this? Again? Okay, so this actress is Julie McCullough. And this is her very first credit, and she's labeled as Beautiful Girl. Okay. <laughs> and she went on to what I remember her from most. Sorry, I had to get the ma noisy mouse, and now you can hear it. Um, what I remember her from most is she played one of Mike's girlfriends on Growing yep. Pains. Yep, that's where I remember her from, yeah. too. Yep. Um, and then she was on the Drew Carey show. Mm. Sharknado. Sharknado, 2015. Oh, 2013 and 2015. Wait a minute. She played two different people on Sharknado, Joni Waves, and then Sharknado, Heart of Sharkness, Julie. Heart of <laughs> Sharkness. <laughs> um, yes, and so she's still working. Revelation, The Unveiling, mm. Julie McCullough. That's um that's interesting. I do remember her from Growing Pains. Yes, that's, that's exactly what I remember where, her from too. As soon as I saw her, I recognized her, and I just thought like maybe, I don't know, bosom buddies or something. <laughs> I don't know where I recognized her from. <laughs> um, so she comes out of the elevator and she asks Mona if she's going to be going to the aerobics class, and then she says, "Bring your friend," and she kind of winks at Tony. Well, she saw the Sassoon jeans. She did, yeah. And so Tony's like, "You think she'll let me walk her poodle?" <laughs> God. <laughs> so now we uh, I got very irritated when we were watching this because there's a flashback dissolve between one flashback to this flashback. But I I know, I, I know but then you we realize this bothered you. <laughs> the point of view actually has to change here because Mona's telling that flashback and now Tony has to be telling this flashback. Right, back. right. Even and though I, it's a flashback that involves Tony. Right. So it's, a diff it's it technically a different in, flashback. And they lead into each other. And I should let it go. But also, <laughs> exactly. it's possible that maybe there's a, there was a scene in between these two flashbacks that got cut somewhere oh, from the original broadcast. True. Because a lot of these episodes still, even the... Like maybe they went back to the living room and they were like, so what happened after that? And 
Or, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, maybe. That was completely unnecessary. Right, exactly. So when, after broadcast, they were like, that's dumb, and they cut it out. Maybe. Or it never happened. Okay, so now we see Tony and Samantha sitting, and I'm going to assume they're having breakfast because it's a Western omelet. Or it could be dinner because he's telling her yeah, the story. Yeah, maybe he made dinner, breakfast for breakfast dinner. Breakfast for dinner. Our kids is, love it. Yeah. Yep. Um, and she's like, you make a mean Western omelet. And he tells her that he got the recipe from Pete Rose. <laughs> and she says, I didn't know you guys were friends. I don't. I know Pete Rose is a baseball player, but I don't know for who or when or what. Do you? Uh, yes, he played for the Cincinnati Reds. He okay. was part of the Big Red Machine, which is a... A big, a, a big winning team, and um, Pete Rose is the all-time hits leader. He hit the most hits. Is he the Major one League that? Baseball. Um, and he's um, can't will never be inducted to the Hall of Fame because he was uh, he got he was busted for gambling on baseball. Oh, okay. I think I've heard of that before. Mm-hmm. So he explains they weren't really friends, but during a game they were changing pitchers, and so he and Pete. Rose got to talking on second base and <laughs> somehow wrote down an entire <laughs> right, right. omelet recipe. He got grandma's eggplant Parmesan and I got his Western omelet. But what's funny is that Tony Danza has a cookbook with his son. And in that cookbook is his recipe for grandma's eggplant Parmesan. Oh. And he's made it several times like on his talk show and on other talk shows and stuff. So that really is like a Tony Danza recipe. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So great. then they're, they're discussing and he starts telling her, you know, I got to talk to you about something and you're not going to like it. But in the long run, and Sam's like, oh, no, mm. not the long run. And then he says, but it's really for your own good. And she's like, oh, you're for your own good, too. <laughs> and he says, we're moving to Connecticut. So she's not very happy about this. And she calls it. Siberia with trees. I know. Where did she get that from? I don't know. <laughs> but he tells her, you know, I got an offer for a job in an apartment building. And she's like, we already live in an apartment building. And he's like, no, but this is a really nice one. And it's got great people. And he says, yeah, it's only a one bedroom, but we have a view of the laundry room. I know. Like, way to sell it. <laughs> Oh, well, you didn't tell me how to view with the laundry room. I'm in. Is that like exciting for Tony because he can check out the hot babes in the laundry room? Probably. See what's going on down there? See who's doing their laundry room. Like, what's so exciting for... about the laundry room? I don't know. You think he's going to say view with the well, pool or the trees? Just think how bad or... the view must be now if the laundry room is exciting. Yeah, that's true. It must be like, you know, pigeons. View with and... the laundry room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he tells her there's an aerobics room. We can take classes. We can make new friends. <laughs> aerobics room. <laughs> and she's like, I already have friends. And he's like, well, not like these people. And then he starts to tell her about Mona. He's like, mm. I ran into this woman. She was such a character. She wanted us to move into her daughter's house and for me to be the maid. And then as soon as Sam hears the word house, her eyes kind of light up. And she's like, a house? Like, I never thought that we would live in one of those. Um, in one of those. Yeah, and like, <laughs> I, th- I think that's, you know, that's probably a real thing for a kid who's li- grown up in an apartment. Yeah, true. You know, and especially yeah. living in Brooklyn and New York, you know, your chances of living in a house are probably way more slim yeah, than in other I mean, places. Yeah. And even places like here, you know, there are families that, Live in live apartments. In apartments for, yeah. I mean, you know, condos, most of their kids' we're childhood. Surrounded by condos yeah. out here. So the idea of her like being able to live in a house is really what's getting her excited about this. And she's like, "Well, did you see it?" And he is like, "Yeah, you know, it actually was on my way back." And he's like, "You know, it's a normal two-story blue trim, big yard, picket fence, jag in the driveway, and a hoop in the backyard." Right. So, but he, I didn't see anything. Right. <laughs> he went slow. Yeah, exactly. He drove around a couple of times. He was looking for the daughter. The oh, daughter. right, yeah. <laughs> He's looking to see if Angela's home. Yeah. So then he's surprised that she's so excited about this house. And he's like, wait a minute, you wouldn't be embarrassed to tell your friends that your dad is a maid. And she's like, well, I would have to give up all the prestige of saying my dad drives a fish truck. <laughs> prestige. That's pretty funny. 
<laughs> that is very funny. Um, and she says, you know what? You're getting older, and it's probably time for you to have your own room. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, you know, this is probably the one reason why he actually took this job. So they cut to Mona sitting in the living room, reading a book called Abnormal Sexual Behavior, written by K. Spicer, Ph.D. I looked this book up to see if it was real, and it's not. There is a K. Spicer, but she makes cookbooks. I have no idea if she knows that her name is on this book somewhere. Yeah, that's interesting. So then, like, maybe they just made up this name or it was a name of someone they knew or maybe someone knew case spicer i have no idea so as she's reading it though she's like you call that abnormal and then she throws the book right i want <laughs> i'd love to know what she read <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> it <laughs> would probably take a lot to shock mona i guess so so the phone rings and she answers it and she's like oh hi mr Maselli. i thought i'd be hearing from you She's still wearing the same outfit, so this is all still the same day. So she better get on getting rid of that bicycle and checking out his references. I know, right. She hasn't done anything. (laughs) Right. But she tells him on the phone, the job is yours if you want it. So maybe she already did all of her due diligence Mm. on the way home. Um, And she's saying something to him on the phone. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. She loves the idea of having a male housekeeper. And as she hangs up, she says, just as soon as I tell her. Yep. So at that point, Angela and Jonathan come in the house. Jonathan's like, hi, Grandma. And Angela's surprised that Mona's there. Oh, just wait, Angela. Mona's going to be there all the time. (laughs) Yeah, like all the time. (laughs) Yes, especially when once Tony's there. (laughs) Right. Um, So she's like oh, what are you doing here? She's like, oh, can a mother just come by and visit her grandson and make some long-distance phone calls? (laughs) I like that she mentioned she's making long-distance phone calls. of course. So Angela says to Jonathan, okay, Jonathan, can you go take your lizard upstairs? And he's like, no. And she's like, would you like to talk about if you want, why you don't want to bring your lizard upstairs? And he's like, no. She's like, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. Jonathan, go upstairs. And he's like, no. And she's like, okay, you must have your reasons. So <laughs> You can tell that they're going through some kind of therapy or whatever. Right. Um, and the other thing, see, the reason why I barely remember this is it's not in the antenna TV version. Oh, right. It's not. Yes, That's you're right. That's why we it's only not. watched it on your... Wait a minute. You know what I'm noticing here, too? What? Jonathan's dressed like Tony when Tony comes to the house. <laughs> He has a yes. little blue collared shirt and on green, uh, polo, and like a green really greenish sweater. Aqua sweater. Yeah. That's hilarious. That is funny. Um, I wonder funny. if they did that on purpose or I don't that know. was just an oversight. Yeah. So he just needs a little tweed jacket and he'd be ready to go. A little college so, professor jacket. He's, she's like, okay, well, I guess, you know, you must have your reasons. And he's like, no, I just wanted to see if you would cave. Right. And then he goes upstairs. So, yeah. So, Jonathan's running things. She doesn't really have any control over him. So, when he goes upstairs, Mona's like, so, how was the therapist? <laughs> right, right. That's what the therapist <laughs> reference is. Yeah. And so, Angela says he needs discipline, but he also needs love. And she's like, you know, it's not easy being a single parent. And Mona asked, well, what did the psychologist say? And he said, get married. Mm. <laughs> Which is a terrible, like, one, would a psychologist say that? But two, would a co- psychologist say that in 1987? Right. Oh, no, wait, this would have been 84 if it's a flashback? Probably, I don't know. Or 86. Yeah, that's true. Get married. That's the solution to all your problems. Right. Um, you know, because it's basically like... And there are still, uh, there's still a lot of thought out there that kids need to have a mother and a father. It's taking some time to get away from that. Right. But, so I could see him being like, you know, he really needs a father figure in his yeah, life. Yeah, so get married, find a man. Him. Yeah. And so Mona's like, oh, why ruin another life? <laughs> <laughs> but Angela says, he says Jonathan is in desperate need of a male influence. Mm. The timing. 
Yes, I know. I mean, Mona couldn't have planned this any better. That's right. So Mona's like, don't you? Th-? She's like, you haven't been getting any male influence either in a while. Always. And Always then, a day. <laughs> so she's trying to sell it. She's like, wouldn't it be great to have a man around the house again? But And Angela's thinking, like, no, the last thing I need is a man in my <laughs> life right now. She's like, I, what I need is um, a housekeeper. So she's like, haven't you found the replacement for Mrs. Hiller? So this was Mona's job, and she was going to take this and run with it. And Mona's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going through candidates right now. Um, She's like, but I think we really need to start expanding our search, thinking bigger and broader. Hmm. And Angela's like, broader than Mrs. Hiller? (laughs) No. That's funny. Yeah, so now outside... Samantha and Tony are getting ready for him to knock on the door. So, you know, in the pilot, we only see Tony at the door mm-hmm. when she answers it. So he's telling Sam, like, get your fingers out of your mouth and uh, stop being so nervous. How do I look? She's like, you look great. And you got all the fish smell out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he's telling Sam, you know, like, please be nice. And it wouldn't hurt if you like tell her what a nice house it is and stuff. And she's like, yeah, butter her up. And he says, yes. But he tells her, you know, I want you to be happy. So if you don't want to be here, then we'll get out of here. And she says, well, we already gave up the apartment and we put everything we own into the van. So you need to get in there because you can't get cold feet now. (laughs) Now, they did a really good job, too, of dressing Alyssa Milano in the same clothes. Yeah, they did. Like, they, these can't be the same clothes, because there's no way she would still fit in them. No, but, they found something. Yeah, they did the shirt and the little jacket over look very similar from the pilot episode. And Sam's looking at the house, and she's like, you know, it is a really pretty house, and it would be great to go to a school where the mascot isn't a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine any school's mascot's really a cockroach, right? I don't know. Maybe. Brooklyn. Tough. Yeah, that's true. Um, So she says, you know, get in there, give him a firm handshake, look her in the eye, and whatever you do, don't tell the pig joke. (laughs) What's the pig joke? I don't know. I'd love to know what that is. (laughs) I don't think we'll ever know. Apparently it's mildly offensive. (laughs) Probably not even mildly. All right, that's true. So she... um, that this is when Sam leaves because she's worried that if Mrs. Bauer sees her black eye right off the bat, it'll scare her. Yeah. So she goes back to the van. So that's why we only see Tony at this first part. Ah, here. interesting. And we learned a whole lot. And so then he knocks on the door and Angela opens it. And they did a really good job of recreating this. Like they look different, but mm-hmm. she's wearing the same bathrobe. It's kind of like almost the same shot. And this time we kind of, we see Angela's look on her face mm, right. when the door when opens the original, for the first time. Right. Yeah, and in the pilot, you only see Tony's face when they first see each other. So now we go back to the living room, and Angela's saying, you know, I think all of our lives have become so much more enriched now that we're together. And it's cute how she's, like, playing with Jonathan's hair. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Jonathan says, yeah, Tony's taught me lots of stuff. And then he burps really loud. Right. <laughs> nice. Nicely done, Tony. <laughs> that, there's that male influence he needed in his life. I know. You think when Angela and the girls are around, he's like te- teaching, teaching Jonathan to, burp to and spit fart. And, yeah, and fart and maybe pee in the backyard. Like, maybe. I don't know. Just doing all gross boy things. Gross boy probably. things. Probably. Um, so they joke that Tony finally got his own room and that Aunt, uh, Samantha got three, her own bedroom and three bathrooms. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and she says, yeah, but I have the one thing that all little girls, I don't have the one thing that all little girls in Brooklyn dream about, which is her own phone. And they're like, no. You're not getting mm, that. Yeah. She always tries to get that phone. Yes. In several different episodes. Because she's, that must have been such... And, and So I think what she's actually asking for is her own phone line, right? right. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. That's what I think. Yep, that's exactly right. Because then you, can make, you could make any phone call you wanted in your room and it didn't bother the rest Man, of the house. Man, I remember that. 
I don't think I ever. Oh, had I never had it, mine. but I mean, I remember. Right, right. I remember. I actually, I remember when I met my friend Troy. He had a phone line in this room, and I thought that was so cool. <laughs> I'm like, man, you have your own phone line <laughs> with an answering machine. Uh, oh my gosh, it's so funny. Yeah. So Mona says, I just think, you know, we're all very happier now that we're a family and we all know who we have to thank for that. And then everyone says, me. And That's they start funny. arguing over <laughs> it again as they fade out to the commercial. So I love the tag of this episode. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> so the snow stopped. Angela, I'm um, sorry, Samantha and Jonathan come running down the stairs because they're excited they're going to go outside and build a snowman. Yeah. And then Samantha's like, huh, why does it always have to be a snowman? Let's build a snow woman. <laughs> <laughs> and Jonathan's like, all right, can I build the top part? <laughs> I know. She- Starts a little weird, yeah, and then but and then but then it gets worse. Tony looks a little upset, as if he's probably going to get in trouble for that, right? <laughs> and then Mona's like, "Well, I better run out there and join them. They're going to need a model." Okay, so <laughs> this, <laughs> this was strange. Like, the grand the grandson's going to need a model right. so he can make nice snow cans. <laughs> On the snow, oh God, the snow woman, snow cans. I don't like. Oh, um, I, I know. I'm gonna. How have does this my, even play out? I don't understand. My um, pseudo honorary granddaughter and my grandson stare at my chest that they While can figure they, out how to make so he can a, mold uh, my perfect <laughs> boobs into a <laughs> snow woman. So, but she goes for it. She goes running out. Oh yeah, she's out the door. Yeah. Now, Tony asks Angela, who's sitting on the couch reading a magazine, are you going to go? And she's like, no, you get all cold and wet and your nose starts to run. I have stuff to do. Tony's like, yeah, yeah, I got stuff to do, too. And then he says, last one out is a rotten egg. Yeah. And he puts down what he's holding and he goes running for the door. And as Angela gets up, she's like, oh, oh, my ankle. So he stops to go make sure she's okay. And then she's like, gotcha. And she runs for the door to get out first. And then he gets to the door, just grabs her, tosses her back into the house. Throws her into the house. And keeps and running. Runs. Oh, you know what we need to talk about? Because I did so much research on it and we what? haven't talked about it yet, is the the door. That's right. We did we did about twenty minutes of research <laughs> on the so door. So when they um when they were showing Angela and Tony seeing each other for the first time. We compared it to the pilot to see how it was different. And at first we were like, is that the same door? And then we realized it is the same door. But one thing different about the door is that it does not have a mail slot in the pilot. And then it does have a mail slot now. Mm. So then I was like, wait a minute. When did the mail slot come about? The mail slot came about in Jonathan Plays Cupid because the Valentine's Day letters start flying through the front door. From Mona, right. So I went and checked, and then I checked the episode before Jonathan Plays Cupid, and the mail slot was there. So I was like, oh, I'm wrong. But then I remembered that they shot some of those episodes out of order. So I went and looked, and the first episode that the mail slot appears in is after, I'm sorry, is The Graduate which would mm. have been the episode shot next after um, Jonathan Plays Keep It. Wow. So you will see, like, When Worlds Collide, I think, was shot before. Some of them don't have the mail slot around the Jonathan Plays Keep It, but it's because they were shot before, even if they aired after. And then anything that was shot after Jonathan Plays Keep It has the mail slot. Wow. And that's 20 minutes of my life I am never going to get I back. Know. Yeah, well, the other night I watched an hour and a half of, <laughs> in defense of my husband. <laughs> a married man. And that is it. That is our episode. Okay, so, so I'm pretty sure you did rating first last I time. I did? I think so. Okay. Um, so I gave this episode a seven. I think it's cute. I like that it's good backstory to how they all came to know each other. It was definitely an episode I loved as a kid just because like they got to stay home from school and they were telling all these stories around the fireplace. Um, and I was excited to see more of like how they all met each other. Um, and yeah, so I thought it was cute. There's some cute 
you know, I also like that it shows that uh, Tony already thought Angela was cute before he even got there. Um, and yeah, that's it. Okay, um, I'll agree. I'll give it a seven. At first, I didn't seem to get like this episode as much, but we watched a couple times, and yeah, the backstory's good, and like the continuity was actually pretty. I don't say amazing. I mean, it wasn't like that hard, but like you know, little little things here and there that you you know learn about and then they yeah. play out. I don't right, know. It was right. like they did a really good job with that. Um and it was a good little story. And it was kinda cute. They all like, oh like everybody's got the day off. We're all gonna hang out yeah, in the fireplace. It was cute. You know? So I would have given it a seven point five if Mona had, had the right bicycle. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just thought maybe we get a seven point five for, for Tony and them the jeans. Oh, the Sassoon mm, jeans. I forgot about. I'm pretty that. sure they're Sassoon. Probably. Anyone else can tell me. <laughs> Let me know. Give leave us a voicemail. <laughs> Who's the boss around here? Me or my mother or maybe it's you? Um, I I went with Mona on this one. Okay. Only because I really truly do believe she is solely responsible for getting Tony to the house and give, convincing him to you know try out for the job. Um. And, uh, you know, she ran into him in the building, whatever, and she really pushed for him to, to get there. So, he, yes, all the other, there's a lot of other moving parts there where they wanted to leave. They took a chance and just left, you know, they want to get out of Brooklyn, or right. at least Tony did. Um, yes, and, and now we have learned that um, Samantha has pushed, you know, for him to go and, and take the job or try out for it because she wanted to live in an actual house. But I mean, Mona did kind of orchestrate the whole thing, and so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna True. go with Mona on this one. All right. It was hard. I went with Sam. One. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> no, but, I mean, it but was a now, hard one. but yeah, I see what you're saying about how she really because the only reason I went with Sam is because he was still not entertaining it until he saw how much oh, she would want to live in a nice. house. Yeah, that's true. Very nice. And I think, you know, I mean, probably just like the idea seems so odd to him. Like at least being a manager of an apartment, you know, he's just kind of like fixing things and doing things. But like yeah. the actual idea of being a housekeeper kind of seemed odd to him. But I always wondered, too, why he was so eager to take the job when he first shows up in the pilot. Um but yeah, I, I agree yeah. that Mona That's did true. orchestrate like, a lot, but I feel like the the new thing that we learned about Sam being excited about the house is really what pushed him to do it because he's yeah. pretty much going to do whatever he can for her. Yeah, and that is true. That's a good point that he's very excited about trying to get the job and that his motivation probably is Sam. They're very good. Yeah, because otywise he wants to get with Poodle Lady, aerobics lady, mm, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't and for Baywatch him, like lady. living in an apartment probably feels, you know, normal. Mm-hmm. Like it's what he's no. It's what like the idea of like being a housekeeper seems so odd than just managing an apartment. Right, right. But, all right, so you can reach us at Who's the Boss podcast on Instagram, Who's the Boss Pod One on Twitter or on Facebook. We're at Who's the Boss podcast page. Or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast, and there you can leave a voice message. All right. All right. That's all we got. Oh, I forgot we were going to play some Alyssa Milano music. We'll have to do it next time. Yeah, because this thing's like an hour and a half. Yeah, (laughs) it's an hour and 12 minutes. Okay, bye. Bye Bye-bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends and maybe... You can tell your grandma, your mother, and y- your sister or brother. Maybe you have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.